Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 5th of January, and a couple of things happened today um, that made me want to make this video and talk about the history of the SPX. First thing that happened was um, in the regular daily email of the McClellan Market Report, which I subscribe to, and if you don't, you really should take a look at it. It's $160 for three months, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, this is the issue that came out um, yesterday after the close, and Tom McClellan has been bearish, short, intermediate, and long for about a couple of weeks now. Um, I'm going to return to something else that he said later on about why he's particularly bearish and eight-month cycles in, um, in a second. Uh, the second thing that got me thinking about this was a tweet from Phil Perlman where he was referring to a video that I did on 20 years of Fibonacci's last August and he threw out some bait there and this spiral diagram um, he didn't say why it would be useful, but I thought that I would uh, take a look at spiral fibs on the 20-year SPX as well. So here we have the weekly 20-year uh, S&P 500, the SPX, and I'm going to load some drawings that I've already um, put in place. So let's start with these ovals. Now I'm going to add in some spirals, some spiral Fibonacci's and I've drawn two of them. I drew one from this point here to here and as you know spiral Fibonacci's go in a spiral they're not concentric circles they're sort of like the pattern on uh, the surface of a shell and if you look at this distance to this distance where we had a pullback after a 94, 95 into 97, this set up a repeating pattern of spirals that coincided here and here and didn't quite coincide here but it came close. I'm going to introduce something afterwards called um, cycle brackets layered on top of these and you'll see a bit more accuracy brought in with these um, these patterns. The second spiral set that I drew was from here, this low in 2004, to this high, simply because there were no spirals between here and here. But if you want to take a look this far out and see if the first spiral set was accurate, you can see that we had a low here which was pretty darn close to this spiral which is in 2011. And remember these are spirals that were first drawn in 1994 with the originating point. So let's take the second one and let's go from here to here and you'll see the first outside uh, coil is pretty accurate and we dance around this area come back and we actually break from the spiral and we move to the second spiral. Move up and we came down pretty darn close to the spiral, moved up to the next spiral. Then we have this massive drop that wasn't predicted anywhere by the spirals, but then we had to move up to the next spiral point, which is actually the same one as this one. Same spiral coil here, but we hit it and we pulled down and we didn't actually make a move back up until right here, which is again pretty close to that spiral. The next one out um, on the pink spirals is out here. So now I'm going to introduce uh, something else to you and that is cycle brackets. And if you go from here to here and draw your first set of cycle brackets you're going from March, mid-March, to January. That's a nine-month cycle. Now let's go back to the McClellan letter where he talks about um, examining an eight-month stock cycle formerly known as the nine-month cycle 
before its period shrank before 2007. So I just thought that there's a coincidence here. Tom was talking about pre-2007 of nine-month cycles, and this was a nine-month cycle. Let me add in lines that will show us where the cycles start and stop. And for that I'm going to bring in the time levels. And I'm also going to add in arrows. So naturally this time cycle and this time cycle match the length of the spiral because I set them that way. We hit the spiral. This was the next time cycle and we hit the spiral within a few months of it, pretty close. Then we go to the next cycle. We had a high near that cycle, but it didn't correspond with the spiral. But we did have a high very close to the end of that nine-month cycle. Go to the next cycle and we had a low corresponding exactly to the end of that cycle bracket. Now the next cycle bracket isn't it remarkable, but it hits the second point of where we chose to have a high starting the second spiral. I just found that that was pretty remarkably accurate. The next cycle shows a low, then we met the spiral, the next cycle bracket ended with a low, then we touched the top of the spiral, the next cycle bracket was pretty damn accurate in calling the 2010 sorry, the 2009 low. Then we had the spiral, we had the spiral, then we had the next cycle bracket, which is indeterminate. It didn't really show anything in terms of a major break. The next cycle bracket ended October 22nd and is pretty darn close to where we saw that high. So I think now we've established that the cycle brackets are pretty accurate, the next one will end in September. And if we say that the cycle brackets are very accurate, we have this coincident point of the time and spiral. Now let me finally add the last thing in, and hope I don't, I'm not running out of time, but I'm going to bring in three sets of Fibonacci's, and now I'm going to add some text notes. We have three Fibonacci's, the red fibs from 2009 to 2012, this area right in here. We have the blue fibs, which are 1994 to 2000, this one right in here. And then we have the green fibs for this area here. What's interesting is the confluence in those three. Here's the confluence of all three fibs right in here. Here's a confluence of two. Here's a confluence of two. Um, and right up here, right at our peaks, we have a peak here, a peak here, and we could be heading up for an eventual peak here. But I just want to show you where the fibs, the spiral, and the time cycles interact. And it's here. Am I saying that we'll pull back to 38.2 percent of this move by the end of September? Not necessarily, but I do have my eye on the pink spiral and I have my eye on the cycle bracket end. I just found all of this to be quite fascinating and um, hope you can make some use of it.